Okay, good morning, uh, everyone. Yeah, thank you for connecting to this morning's class. Let's pray, look to the Lord, and we will begin. We'll pray together. Abba Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for all uh, your grace and blessings in our lives. Lord, we also thank you for this time uh, studying your word, Father God. And Lord, we know that you've called us to the supernatural. So help us to build our understanding about how to flow in the supernatural, O oh God. And Father God, even as we learn these keys, um, we believe, Lord, that um, we will see more and more of your power invading our lives. We praise you, Lord. Father, we um, uh, pray for the entire class, Lord, each, each one who is connected and listening, that uh, you will work uh, mighty things in their lives, Father. You know each of their needs, you know their concerns uh, and uh, their difficulties, Father. And we just pray that um, you will encounter, uh, encounter them with your uh, supernatural power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So in the last class, we uh, talked about the renewed mind and how it's important to think the way God thinks while our mind says that something is impossible. God sees it differently. And he always has, when we say impossible, that means zero possibilities. But God sees possibilities, many different possibilities. And uh, in that, when we look at, when we consider the way God thinks, there are so many examples in the Bible. Looking at the lives of men and women of God, whom uh, the community, their community did not even consider them to be anything. But God did a marvelous work in their lives. Think about David. David was just a shepherd boy. Even when Samuel came to anoint, the family did not remember David only. Uh, they did not even think of him as an option. But God used a man like David, the younger, you know, one of the younger sons and uh, uh, God worked through him to, to kill the giant Goliath. But that's God's way of thinking. He doesn't see anything as impossible or uh, anything as uh, difficult. So we've been talking about, you know, the Red Sea and crossing the Jordan and bringing down the walls of Jericho. All that was possible by God, though impossible with man. But why, why are we talking about the renewed mind? Renewed mind is a mind which thinks like how God thinks with the possibilities, okay? The renewed mind will find the options of God or otherwise just allow God to do what he can do. We saw in the case of uh, um, the multiplication, right? Multiplication of bread and uh, fish. How uh, in John chapter 6, we had Philip, whose mind was still very natural thinking. Whereas Andrew had this possibility thinking, maybe we have this much lunch, maybe Jesus can do something. And he goes ahead and there it is the miracle. Jesus walking on water, right? Initially, Peter believes. So he's thinking through the renewed mind that God is able to do it. However, Soon he switches into natural mind and therefore he's not able to see the miracle. He starts sinking. Now, how do we operate in the renewed mind is the question that we are asking today. Okay, So we all want to operate by the renewed mind. Nobody wants to operate just by the natural mind and miss out on God's blessings. But how? How to operate by the renewed mind? See, firstly... Uh, renewal of the mind, as Romans chapter 12 says, when we don't conform our, our mind to the ways of this world, but are transformed by the renewing of our minds. Transformation. What is transformation? Transformation is making a turnaround. Okay? It, it's like, you could also say repentance, where our way of thinking is a certain way, but repentance is what? It's like going the opposite way. God says, no, that's not correct. So we're willing to go the opposite way, right? Metanoia. Uh, transformation is that we are constantly thinking the way God wants us to think. 
transformation of our minds. Imagine what will happen if we are always thinking how God's word says. We are not thinking in our own uh, worldly way. But our minds are renewed. So a renewed mind is a powerful mind. And obviously, it's not going to happen overnight. You and I have to spend so much time in the word of God, meditate on it day, day and night. We've seen how God instructed Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, verses uh, 7 through 9, where he says, this word of the uh, law shall not depart from your mouth, but you meditate on it day and night. Okay, And this is how you're going to make your way successful. So when we meditate on the word of God day and night, what's happening? The renewal of the mind is happening. The impossibilities of the world are now being turned into the possibilities in God. So the way we think about life's situations, challenges, assignments, problems, a little bit different. But if we go by our earlier mind, we will think the way the world thinks and miss out on the supernatural power of God. So how to get a renewed mind? First is meditation on the word of God. Renew the mind. Romans chapter 12, you know, verses 1 and 2. Submit to God. Submit completely to God and renew the mind with the word of God. Now apart from this, how to renew the mind? We can hear from the Holy Spirit. We can hear from the Holy Spirit uh, and we can go according to what the Holy Spirit is saying in those moments. Now, in both of these cases, John chapter 6, the multiplication of um, the food and uh, Peter and Jesus walking on water, God was thinking differently, right? That's why it happened this way. So, hearing from the Holy Spirit. In those moments, obviously, Jesus would have been in tune with the Father. And he would have known. That what does the Father want? The Father wants multiplication of food. The Father wants, uh, you know, me to walk on water. And uh, it's possible for Peter to walk on water. This is in the mind of God. And Jesus is aware of it. So that is why those kind of miracles took place. So in the same way, when we encounter certain situations, one is already be renewed with by the uh, word of God. Our mind is full of the word of God. You know, even if you go to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20, uh, he says, uh, uh, incline thine ears to my word okay, and keep the word in the midst of your heart. That means we must give so much attention to the word, full attention to the word. And the word is filled in our hearts like that. We live our lives. In addition to that, in those moments, we seek the Lord and we say, God, what am I supposed to do now? Remember, Jesus said, I only uh, do what I see the Father do. I do what I hear the Father say, right? So he is responding to what is in the heart and mind of God. That's what you and I want. So we can, apart from renewing our mind with the logos, we want the rema inspired word of God in those moments. What does God want me to do? What is in God's heart for this situation? We can seek the Lord and go by what he is saying. Let's quickly turn to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 through 16. Maybe one of us can uh, read through the entire passage and then we will begin to explain it verse by verse. 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 to 16. Yeah, um, Komal, you're using the mic? Okay, okay, great. Go ahead, go ahead. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man mm. which is in him? Mm. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Yes. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of who is from God what we might know, the things that have been freely given to us by God. Mm. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing 
spiritual things which with his spiritual but mm. the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god mm. for they are foolishness to him nor yes. can we can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he who is a spiritual judges all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one for who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of christ Mm, yes, thank you, thank you, Komal. So this is the passage where earlier, uh, from verses eight, we will see that scripture which says, "No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived the things that God has prepared for those who love Him." But in verse ten, it says that by His Holy Spirit He has revealed them to us. So by the Holy Spirit, God reveals what is in His heart. all the mysterious and wonderful things that he can do for us from verse 11 we notice that the holy spirit knows the mind of god why because the holy spirit is the spirit of god so the holy spirit obviously our spirit knows what our mind is thinking isn't it the spirit is aware of our thought process our reasoning our conclusions um and uh, in a similar way the holy spirit is aware of the way god's mind is thinking so since we have the ministry of the holy spirit every believer has the ministry of the holy spirit in us we can hear from god we can receive from god now of course apart from just the direction of the holy spirit uh which is like the general ministry of the spirit in every believer's life when we are baptized in the holy spirit there is this other dimension of uh, um dreams visions prophecies uh and uh, many other supernatural things also which god can communicate to us so the holy spirit at work can reveal the mind of god can reveal the plans of god the purposes of god to us so he is the one he is uh, the third person in the godhead who is there to help us know what god wants in that moment so that's the first thing now let's move on verse 12 now we have we have received not the spirit of this world but the spirit who is from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god so as part of the ministry of the holy spirit <coughs> is the revelation of the mind of the lord or the ways and thoughts of god which have been given to us meaning the things that god wants to reveal to us those things holy spirit is willing to reveal to us let's move on uh, could you please read verse 13 komal these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual hmm so the holy spirit can reveal to us now when the holy spirit speaks to us we have a responsibility and what is that responsibility compare spiritual things with spiritual that means developing the capacity to discern what the holy spirit is saying he speaks he leads he guides wonderful what about us we need to be able to understand so that's what it is comparing spiritual things with spiritual where you and i are able to grasp what he's trying to say for that situation okay and let's move on is is it possible to understand these things with the natural mind no that's why spiritual with spiritual it says so our spiritual mind has to be operational in other words renewed mind has to be operational only then we are going to grasp it otherwise we'll miss it out okay now verse 14 again komal yeah. 
but the natural man does not receive the things of hmm. the spirit of god hmm. for they are foolishness to him yes. nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned hmm yes so uh the natural mind is not able to receive the things of god the things of god are even foolish like how we saw how can food be multiplied it's foolish how can one walk on water it's foolish how can a small you know like a teenager kill a giant it's foolish how can thousands of people cross a sea it's foolish okay so the natural mind does not have the capacity to receive the spiritual things of god that's why earlier we said we need that capacity and that capacity is only in our spiritual mind which is why our spiritual mind has to be sensitive it has to be able to hear from god so many times you know many of the testimonies that that we hear people say that i was going through this and then i sensed god told me to do this right <clears throat> like okay pray or anoint with oil or um, uh, you they were not able to stand up they were not able to move their hands but they sensed god impressing on their hearts take some action it may be maybe try to move a little bit or something but to the natural mind it will be foolish why how can't happen but if we are sure if we have been able to discern that that's what god is asking us to do and we go with it we will see god at work we will see the release of god's power so what we are saying is let's be strong in the word no compromise on that that has to happen okay along with that sensitivity of our spiritual mind to hear from the lord discern what he is saying and taking it up that is what will bring the release of his power now if we only operate by the natural mind we will miss out Okay, so that's quite clear. Now let's move on. Verse fifteen. Verse fifteen. Yes. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Okay. So uh, again, it is in continuation to the fact that you know the things that are of the spirit of God, which are received. by the spirit of god that they are spiritually discerned and uh, we who are spiritual we will judge all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one uh, let let's focus in on we will judge all things judge all things again refers to discernment by our spiritual mind uh, of the things which come from the lord so um you know we we are able to tell whether something is of the lord or not okay and uh, in fact when we do come across circumstances let's say the one which uh, peter was in when uh, jesus says okay come he did not have much time to discern whether hey is it from the lord or am i just is is my mind playing games with me but in that moment he had to act so the sensitivity of our spiritual mind we need to develop it to an extent where um you know we spiritually with our renewed mind we're able to accept what god is saying and then be able to take action we may or may not have a long period of time to go back review check you know analyze and then come back and say ha ha okay now i will do it we may not have that kind of time but if at all times we are training ourselves uh, to spiritually discern quickly it's helpful okay so now how do we how do we uh, develop that capacity to discern quickly
yeah holy spirit is already revealing he is already revealing we have to right so we have a responsibility to yield and listen but how to develop that capacity to listen <laughs> through endurance renewed mind yeah renewed mind is already there apart from renewed mind what shall we do yes being sensitive okay we've been saying that over and over again be sensitive grasp discern how to be sensitive what makes us sensitive true reading god's word but also um i would put it as engaging in god's word see engaging means not just reading understanding it applying it and uh, you know like sharing yeah sharing confessing living it out so in a in a holistic sense when we're engaging in the word of god there's a reference in hebrews 5:14 which says those who are of age you know that they have their senses trained they have their senses trained right can somebody quickly read that hebrews 5:14 saying surely blessings i will bless you mm. and multiplying i will multiply you uh hebrews is it but solid food belongs to those who are of all full ages that is those who are by reason of use have their senses exceed to discern both good and evil okay see uh, senses exercise to discern both good and evil what comes before that constant use those who are of age with constant use have their senses exercised to discern so how do i become sensitive constant use constant use of our you know uh, our faith muscle constant use of our uh, 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 time in prayer constant use of our um, you know or you could say obedience to god constantly engaging in the word understanding the word living the word confessing the word so as we are doing this if the lord reveals something to us as an inspired word it becomes easy for us to discern otherwise you know people ask the question how do i know it's god how do i know that it's not me these questions are always asked how do we know the more we hear from the lord the more we apply it the more we walk in it the surer we are so every next time becomes easier and better than the previous time so how do i become sensitive to answer that question keep hearing from god okay keep hearing from god keep if i if my may put it like this practice constant use constant use for everything we want to try and hear from the lord okay lord i want to do this what are you saying i am praying for this person what are you saying um i want to you know uh, make this choice what are you saying i'm going to go and talk to so and so what are you saying constantly what are we doing hearing from the lord hearing from the lord hearing from the lord then as the holy spirit what have what have we been saying from the beginning holy spirit will reveal the mind of god the purposes of god then our spiritual mind will discern and our spiritual mind will be able to receive it natural mind will say hey this is all foolish don't go by this okay it's a waste of time but we know how to we know when to shut down the natural mind we'll say hey wait a minute this is spiritual god is actually speaking natural mind so you hold on i have to switch i'm going to work through my spiritual mind and the more we are doing this the more we are doing this right uh, the more we know so when a moment comes when there is a multitude there's no food suddenly the renewed mind and the inspired word of god in in our uh, the in inspired word that we receive in our spirit we are able to decide okay you know what we have to pray and multiply the food jesus said come we will walk on the water because 
switch to the renewed mind switch to the spiritual mind but it's not going to happen overnight we have to develop the sensitivity over time by constant use practice to be able to discern okay uh, in the beginning will it be difficult yes it could be difficult it's like how we slowly uh, identify isn't it we, generally when there are kids and you give them puzzles they take some time to say hey this is yellow this is blue this is red but as they are doing it it becomes quicker when you say hey what is red immediately they pull it out so in the same way for us our spirit, spiritual mind we put a lot of pressure and say no you should know it you should know but if you've not practiced then how can it come easy how can it come fast so here's the encouragement always practice hearing from the lord what is the mind of the spirit we can pray and say lord what is your mind about the situation when we are praying in church for people or we are praying for our friends don't just pray you also ask and say lord what are you saying what is your mind god will give us a picture holy spirit will start to speak to us this is what i'm thinking for this person now what am i doing practice constant use constant use and we also have the backing of the word of god thank god you know we already have the word of god which will help us discern what the spirit is saying so based on the word of god i can i can understand ha huh, yes this is really coming from god this is what he is saying let me take this step and then you start seeing the miracles take place okay um and uh, verse 16 very beautiful scripture it says we have the mind of christ the mind of christ can you imagine every believer <coughs> how in our homes and other places you know when we are in the airport uh, we we look for wifi connection we say oh there's no connection here the network is not good okay but here's the spiritual reality all of us as believers you have excellent connection to the mind of god in fact the way paul put it is we have the mind of christ it's right here how because holy spirit is what who is revealing the mind of god to us full connection there's no interruption we can receive what is in the mind of god okay that's a reality in christ we have the mind of christ so ideally there should be no situation where we say i don't know what to do because holy spirit is there we can always ask him what is god saying right now what is god saying for the situation what is god saying for this person holy spirit will reveal we will discern by the word of god the deposit of god's word in our hearts and then we go ahead you know we pray it over people we make the decisions we make the choices and then we see the power of god manifest okay so that's how we apply our renewed mind are there any instances where we have experienced the spirit gave us some something you know like you say like this or you do like this and you actually saw something supernatural take place so if there are any such experiences please do share even online those who are online sister i have something to say yes sister uh, yes uh, sister getrud uh, can we please hold on uh, there's yeah, one yeah, person in the class who'll share yeah. after that you can go ahead yes just ahead. a couple of days time you know uh, when i just came back usually i come a little late uh, thing so uh, uh, though i was a little too early uh, two days back and if i wanted to just go back home and come but then i felt prompted no go to the anyway it's okay at 8:40 i came so to my amaze uh, uh, the boy who was unwell yeah oh, yeah obese the first year boy huh? a boy yeah boy was was uh, uh, on the sofa so initially i thought uh, it was just like either he fainted or something and then a couple of us me komal nikhil and uh, avinash and uh, then i felt very strongly in the spirit like uh, like pray so all of us were actually praying in the mind you know like just keeping hands we were not clue and avinash told me that you are on the way and you were not receiving the call because you were driving mm. 
and uh, the spirit was like just leading me very consciously like you know to keep hands and pray loudly mm. so and then we prayed and uh, as you came we put him in the car and then he got the necessary medication and care but uh, one thing i can uh, testify because i shared the same thing at home there was a complete conviction that it's like fine there's nothing to you know a thing so it was not something like you know uh, our effort or uh, our thought uh, process that came into picture like spirit leading like pray and is absolutely fine we prayed and uh, he came back and it was such a coincidence that when i go back around 12 o'clock i'm seeing all the three coming back uh, you dropped them and they mm-hmm. came so i met them and then he was like i'm fine on that it was like uh, okay okay uh, okay this okay. happened a couple of days back yeah no? so, yeah yeah praise god yeah i know so this incident happened and it was truly god helping all of us in such a situation right it was a tough situation i know okay thanks for sharing akil uh, sister gertrude please go ahead sister this is um, my neighbor uh, it was in uh, month of um, i think it was uh, last year she uh-huh. was traveling abroad and uh, that same morning i just went to check on uh, how is she but okay. uh, she couldn't uh, walk her, her knee got caught up and you know she just couldn't touch her leg to the ground mm. and then uh, i told her you need any help medicines and all and she said no i am okay but when i came back the holy spirit like uh, telling me go and pray for her go and pray for her so i took one ointment and i rang the bell and i said uh, Uh, do you want me to pray for you and mm-hmm. put some uh, ointment then she said okay mm-hmm. and i prayed for her and uh, like when i praying i know that god is healing her because the power of the holy spirit was so strong at that time so the, when i came back and i forgot and her flight was at 12 so when they were leaving uh, i i just went i said rose how you feeling she said oh i'm fine look i'm completely i can walk and nothing is wrong with my leg and she said thank you for praying mm-hmm. so that was one of the incident sister yeah praise god praise god um, uh, sister that you could minister to you know your friend in in that time and you could see god's power at work uh, is there anyone else you want to share of a situation or a circumstance where you really needed god to give you that wisdom and then the miracle happened sister yes I'm... yes yes sister lucy sister when none of my class when i heard about the healing ministry uh-huh. after finishing my class i was just uh, sitting at my place and uh, just thinking where i can do these works god i was just asking god in the by that evening actually it was a friday evening god directed me to go to one of my husband's uh, friend uh, wife got the para means a stroke oh. she was admitted to nimans then there was a something a push that i should go there and pray over that then mm-hmm. i delayed it by two days and the third day i went over there i met her i prayed over her and i told her, you will be able to walk by sunday mm-hmm. then i pro- mm-hmm. prayed over her and i spoke to the other person who was in the next bed also i also made it to pray uh, that i can do all three uh, things through christ who strengthens me mm-hmm. even she had a small blood clot in her brain and she had a my headache severe headache mm-hmm. and this is my sister testament and she's a, the first patient she is able to walk now and she's going on a sp- uh, speaking therapy and other things sister mm, praise god yeah thank you thank you sister lucy uh, for sharing you know your experience of ministering to someone so as i think of all these things i remember a strong impression that i had and this was a time when uh, my dad was in the hospital so i was with my father it was pretty long duration that i had to stay with him so i was uh, trying to keep myself strong in the words i was listening uh, listening reading the word and of course listening to a lot of testimonies and i felt like i must listen to the life stories and sermons of some of the mighty men of god uh, in the past so i was listening to smith wigglesworth okay and uh, his sermons being narrated uh, some of his testimonies so i was really pumped up 
listening to Smith Wigglesworth, sitting there, though I was sitting in the hospital, uh, I was really having this urge that, oh God, you've done such amazing miracles. Even today, you're a miracle working God. And, uh, you know, I want to pray for people. I want to extend my faith for people. So I'm sitting there and I suddenly get this call. And I, I knew this lady. Um, she was an APC, but some other location. And she was very much in touch with me uh, for, you know, a couple of years. And we would just chat on WhatsApp and all. But that day she called me. And she was in a desperate situation. Her child was diagnosed with some syndrome. And uh, the doctors had isolated the child into, um, you know, when, when they isolate you, the, it's a very aseptic in environment. Like you can't go inside. And there are a lot of rules to actually go and see the child. So she called up and she was desperate. She said, you know, please pray for my son. Uh, I don't remember his age at that time, maybe four or something. Uh, please pray for him. He's, uh, the doctors are not giving much hope. Okay. So, but while I was listening to that Smith Wigglesworth thing and all, I really felt in my spirit like God, today God's power is going to be seen. Uh, and uh, it was as if the Holy Spirit, right, in your spiritual mind. If, can you imagine I'm sitting in the hospital? What are my options? Of course, I can pray for the patients around, but to go and minister that day. But I'm sensing like there's something I have to do. And the Holy Spirit was giving me that kind of a feeling. And then this lady calls me. So I thought, okay, maybe God wants me to pray for her on the phone. Uh, and for some reason, I just asked her, uh, where is the child admitted? And she says the same hospital. <laughs> so the child was in the same hospital uh, on another floor. And I was so shocked. I was like, oh, really? Like you're right here. You know what? I'm also here. So let me just come. So she gave me a time slot and all. And they allowed me to go you know, with the mask and everything to just go. Nothing major, just a short prayer. But because I'd heard all the testimonies of Smith Wigglesworth, I was really like, on fire. I was like, I rebuke this syndrome. We leave in the name of Jesus. And there was, a, I mean, for the glory of God I'm sharing, right? Uh, the child recovered. He's, he's well and good now. He's, uh, uh, you know, in primary school. He's, uh, it, it's been several years. I think it's been five plus years. So he's not had similar incidents since. Uh, but that day, that day, it was very miraculous for me also because I'm sensing this God is going to do something and I have to go pray for someone but I don't know who it is and suddenly this lady calls this child was in need they're in the same building just on the upper floor right but to think that the Holy Spirit can uh, put it in our minds and say this is what I'm doing this is what where I'm taking you this is the these things are going to happen it's amazing. How can that child recover from that situation? Yes, he recovered. It's just the work of God. But that's what God was doing. We were a part of it. right? We were a part of it. Uh, but the point that I'm trying to make is to always be in tune. It could be a simple prompting also. Sometimes we are praying for people and uh, we just sense something like lay hands on them or, um, you know, speak this word over their lives. It's, it's for us, it's too simple. We're like, God, what can you do from it? But for them, it means the whole world to them. Okay. Uh, once I remember there was one brother, I was praying for him. He was going through a desperate situation also. And I was seeing some very like uh, antique instruments like you know that old pen like a quill in which you put the ink and you write nowadays who uses that we're all typing on the computer but i was seeing all these antique looking uh, instruments and tools so after praying for him i just told him you know brother i don't know why but i'm seeing all these images and he said oh really i love to collect those uh, those kind of tools and i have many of them in my house and uh, he was so touched just by that one one thing that i said 
whereas for me it was very silly i was thinking god what are you showing me but for him it meant the whole world it meant as if god knows me god sees me and uh, uh, god is speaking to me he will help me it meant a lot to him in that moment but the point again see renewed mind we have the logos we are equipping ourselves with the logos no compromise with that but the inspired word of god we have the mind of christ in those situations what is the spirit saying what is he doing what what is he guiding us to say right even if it looks and sounds simple go for it you never know what it might how it might bless that person and of course you know there are solutions to problems which we have talked about earlier god might just give a solution and say why don't you do it like this why don't you do it like that uh, and uh, as we do it we will see god ministering right okay great anyone else you want to share yes vimal so ma'am uh, when we were in delhi our family uh, used to live there before covid 19 yes yes so uh, one of our neighbors so she is a widow and she used to do, do job and all but she got a disease uh, of like aids oh. and uh, because they don't know about jesus christ so my mom went to them and my mom shared gospel to them and uh, after uh, some of times she get to know she has a aids mm. and uh, when she knows about it so it is like uh, very uh, like come going to last stage and uh, uh, so many uh, times uh, after time so much time went so doctor told like there is no hope to live she will live only she, uh, they give time so i saw my pastor came to her home and with my pastor i was there so my pastor uh, speak the word of god and he uh, told that word uh, that uh, dry bones word mm. and he prayed and he told don't lose hope only one hope is jesus so she believed and uh, she was before that she was very depressed but will because she has uh, little kids small kids and she is doing job there is no one to take care of. so she uh, she believed and now she is doing god's uh, work okay. and she, okay. she, she is alive she recovered from that yeah. situation and okay. uh, she is a prayer uh, leader in uh, wow. delhi wow amazing yes. amazing praise god yeah so the impossibilities and uh, just by listening to what is in god's mind at that time see he he spoke that word right that prophetic word um so in that way always let let's be sensitive to what god is showing and doing and there'll be much increase if we go by that okay uh, so with that i think i will stop and we will continue in the next session we are going to learn about anointing so till now which are the keys that we have uh, studied understanding the realms natural realm spiritual realm that was one second was faith how faith will unlock god's miracles third one was word of god how we can apply the word of god it's the miracle seed that produces a harvest uh, and it carries power to create that's something we studied and then the last two weeks we've been spending time on our yeah renewed mind how we must operate out of the renewed mind and uh, uh, be sensitive to the promptings of god and as we are doing that little by little we will see god leading us into uh, his supernatural works so with that we will stop for right now and uh, may i request one of the online students to lead in prayer please Let's pray. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to give thanks to you again for this time. We want to bless you for this bright new day you have given unto us. We thank you for all that we have learned today, King of Glory. 
We pray that may this open our minds, Abba Father, and even to those, O oh God, who are next to us, King of glory. May your word, O oh Lord, move and give us the spirit of discernment as your children. Lord, as we are going, Abba Father, to the next class, we surrender that you will be with us and be ahead of us. We worship you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Miriam. God bless. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed weekend.